after three months of focusing on returning to believing in the Lord, my hope today is that you have chosen to believe in God. Do you believe in the Lord today? The question now is, because you have said that you believe in the Lord, what are you going to do with that belief? What are you going to do in that belief? You see, faith, as you have heard me say repeatedly, faith is more than just believing. You see, believing, I want you to understand today, that is simply the starting point to faith. I hope that makes sense. Faith, as again, you have heard me say repeatedly before, faith, it must move. Faith, it should move, it must move. And I say to you today that faith, it must move with conviction today. Now in this letter to the church in Rome, Paul, he encouraged believers, he encouraged believers to not be conformed to this world. Paul, he encouraged believers to be transformed through the renewing of the spirit. This was Paul's call to believers to move with a heart of conviction rather than have a heart that will conform to the world. Now, to be very clear about this, conforming is defined as being similar or identical. Conforming is defined as being obedient or compliant. Conforming is an act or to act in accordance with prevailing standards or customs. Again, you as a child of God who has been renewed through the works of the Holy Spirit, you are not to be living in accordance to the way of this world. The believer, we should be living with a heart of conviction for the way that is of the Lord. To be clear, when it comes to conviction and what that means, conviction is having a strong belief or certainty. Do you have a heart of conviction for the Lord today is what I ask all of you. Are you full of conviction in your faith in God today? Now, you may begin to wonder, well, pastor, why are you talking about conviction today? Why is it that you are focusing in on conviction today? Well, the reason why I am focusing in on conviction today is because there is a huge battle that is taking place right now. There is a battle that is taking place today. There is a fight that is taking place today. I asked, have you been an observant of the fight? Have you been observant of the battle that is taking place in the world today? If you haven't been observant, well, let me let you know what's going on in the world today. Let me tell you what the fight is that's going on in the world today. Let me tell you about the battle that is taking place right now, this very moment. The battle being waged today is the same battle that has been waged ever since Satan entered into the garden and deceived mankind in the garden. The battle that is taking place this very minute is the battle of good versus evil. Where do you stand in this battle? Are you on the side of good? Or are you standing on the side of evil? As a child of God, I know what side you should be standing on. Do you know what side that you should be standing on today? You see, as a child of God, you should be standing on the side of good. Now, some may begin to wonder, well, Pastor, what is good? We have been forever told that good is subjective to one's opinion. You've heard me say that before. But I, I tell you today, the more and more I live, 
the more and more I go bald, the more and more that gray may start to creep in on me. I tell you today, the more tired I grow of that mindset, that good is subjective. And, and the reason why I grow tired of that mindset is because good, it is well defined for us in the word of God. You see, I, I find the more and more that I live day by day, I find and I begin to feel that those who love to use the notion that good is subjective to one that believes and knows what good is. I believe they often use that notion that said to justify their wicked actions. I won't get no amens there. The wicked like to do a deed that they know is terrible. And then they say, well, I did it for a righteous cause. No, you did it. I did it for a good cause. Get out of here. You see, when God talks about good, he, the Lord, he always points to liberty. That is freedom. He points to justice. He points to actions that are taken and done in sincere love, pure love, genuine love. For example, God, he points to the giving of his only begotten son as a good deed. The giving of his only begotten son, he points to as, again, an action taken by grace, an action that was taken to free us, to free mankind from the captivity, from the bondage of sin. We are repeatedly shown through his word that good is caring for and, and uplifting others. Scripture shows us repeatedly that good is helping others to be fruitful. Good is helping others to prosper. In other words, doing good is helping someone to be blessed. Are you doing good today? So if good is loving and helping someone to be blessed, then evil is its complete opposite. It is bitterness. It is hatred. Where Paul said that love does not envy, nor does it parade itself in doing good. Evil, I tell you today, evil, it envies. Evil today, I tell you, it parades itself. It loves to boast. It's pride. It is prideful in its way. It has to tell somebody that it's good. What kind of good person has to tell somebody that they done did good? Won't get no amens there. That's okay. But Paul said that love does not behave rudely, nor does it seek its own. Guess what evil does? Evil behaves rudely, doesn't it? It moves out of selfish ambition, doesn't it? It's all about what, what they want, not about what, what others want. I won't get no amen there. Where love does not rejoice in iniquity, guess what evil does? If you want to know the difference between good and evil, I'm breaking it down for you today. Evil, it, it rejoices in iniquity. Evil, it rejoices in lying. Evil, it rejoices in being greedy. Evil, it rejoices in, in causing division. Evil, it seeks to tear down. And I ask, what side are you standing on? Because there's a battle that's raging. There's a battle that's going on today between good and evil. What side are you standing on today? Many of us will say, I'm on the side of good, pastor. I'm on the side of good, preacher. But something that I have observed is that many so-called Christians today they will say that they're standing on the side of good, but they walk with those who are evil. Oh, I ain't going to get no amen on that. That's okay. Truth be told, I tell you today that there is a hypocrisy problem in the church. There is a hypocrisy problem in Christianity today. Somebody may wonder, Pastor, what you're talking about? How is there a hypocrisy problem in the church and, and in Christianity? When did that happen? 
Open up your eyes today is what I would say to you. See, in the battle of good versus evil, the, the so-called Christian has chosen to conform rather than to fight against evil. God, he created all people, I want you to understand today, he created all people to, to have freedom of choice. And by such freedom, he has given us the, the choice to be able to choose how we live in this world, what we do, what we worship, what we praise today. But such freedom has always been under attack by those who are of wickedness and by those who are evil. Even more today, the attack against freedom, I tell you, it is open and it is blatant today by those who would take away the choices and the freedoms that has been given to all people by the Lord. Who are we to take away the rights and the freedoms that people have been given, that by all people have been given by the Lord today? I want to make sure that I keep throwing in all people. God, he created all of mankind in his image and in his likeness. All of us he created. And he's given us again, all of us, freedom of choice. Who am I to say what somebody can or cannot do in their life? We ought not be on the side of those who would take away the freedoms that God has given to every single person in this world today. So why are so many so-called Christians, and I keep using air quotes there, why are so many Christians happily on the side of those who would take away the rights and the freedoms of others today? With this in mind, I want us to, again, take a look at the story of Daniel today. Because there's, again, a battle that is taking place. There's a battle that is going on today. And I want us to take a look at the story of Daniel today so that we can see the kind of conviction that we must have. Because, because again, we as God's children, we should be standing for good today. We should be standing on the side of good and we should be fighting on the side of good today. Now, if you are not familiar with Daniel's story, just to catch you up on his story, he was one of over 3,000 Jews that were carried away into captivity by the Babylonians after Nebuchadnezzar had conquered the land of Judea, specifically Jerusalem. The exile to Babylon, that was God's judgment against Judah, the people living in the southern kingdom, because they had forsook the Lord, and in forsaken the Lord, they had chose to turn to living sinfully. And so we'll see that in the third and the fourth verse, in the first chapter of Daniel, we'll see that Nebuchadnezzar, he had all kind of young men taken, young men of Israel, young men who were descendants of, of kings and, and nobles. He had them taken, we are told there, to be assimilated to the Babylonian culture. The young men, they were, we're told there, to be taught the Babylonians language, they were to be taught their literature as well. We're told there in the fifth verse, we'll see that they were to be given the king's diet, his delicacies, wine to drink, that they were to be trained again in the Babylonian way, the Babylonian culture, they were to be trained in it for three years, we're told there. Now, I want to make it very clear that Nebuchadnezzar, in the actions that he was taking here, was trying to force the Jews to conform. He was trying to force these young men to conform, to give themselves over to obedience in the Babylonian way, in the Babylonian culture. Now, let me also state that by being Gentiles there, the Babylonian culture, we should understand that it went against the Mosaic law. What that means there is that it was a way that was in disobedience of the Lord. In other words, the Babylonian culture, it was one that was sinful. 
Now, though many of the Jews had forsook the Lord and had sinned, I want you to understand today that Daniel, he was not one of those that had did that. Daniel, he was a young man who was of faith. He was a young man who was committed to the law, committed to living according to God's instructions. So for Daniel, his exile in Babylon was one that would test the conviction of faith that was in his heart. Daniel was like how many of us are today. We live in a world of sin today. We are surrounded by sin. And so there in the seventh verse, the scripture, it shows us that the assimilation of these young men, it began with the changing of their names. We're told there that the chief of the eunuchs he changed the names of those young men with Daniel's name being changed from Daniel to Belteshazzar. Now with the changing of their name, the forcing on of this different culture, again, I want you to understand here today that Nebuchadnezzar in this attack that he was executing here, he was executing an attack against their identity, who they were. And I want to make a note here that Satan, he tried to level the same kind of attack against Jesus when he tempted Jesus to sin. Over in the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel in his temptation of Jesus, you would see that Satan, he came to Jesus and he said to Jesus, if you are the son of God. Again, he, he had a plan of attack, trying to attack the identity of our savior, Jesus Christ. In attacking Jesus' identity, Satan, he questioned whether Jesus had the power of God. When he said, hey, why don't you turn those stones into bread? Let's see if you can do it. And attacking Jesus' identity, Satan, he questioned whether or not the angels would, would protect Jesus. Would they keep Jesus from any hurt, harm, or danger? Are you really who you say you are? Are you really the son of God? Satan, the devil, was challenging. He was trying to attack the identity of Jesus. What is it with evil and wicked men always trying to attack the identity of who somebody is? What is it with wicked and evil men always trying to call somebody outside of their name? I ain't going to get nothing said back to me about that one. Always trying to, to force an identity onto somebody. What's with, with equal, wicked and uh, evil men trying to do that? Well, if you've ever wondered about it, if you've ever been curious about it, there's always a hope of, of controlling who somebody is. And, and the best way to do that is by attacking their identity and trying to, to take away their identity. There is a hope of, of evil men controlling what the truth is. That's why they are always adamant that only they know what's right and wrong. Only they know the truth. You don't know it. They know what is best. Now, what's concerning about this is, as Paul said, again, the battle of good versus evil today is being waged everywhere you can imagine, and even more than that. It's being waged in our homes. It's being fought in our workplaces. It's even being fought where it's being determined what should or shouldn't be taught in schools today. You can only learn this part of history. You can't learn that part of history, they say. The battle is even being waged over what one does with their own body. Yeah, it's all about control. It's all about taking away somebody's freedoms. Again, God-given rights and freedom. Who are we to say that we can control what somebody does? 
Even more concerning in this battle today is that this battle is being waged in heavenly places, as Paul said. Just take a look at Christianity today, since I mentioned it earlier. Christianity today it has suffered greatly in the battle of good versus evil. The reason why is because evil men, they have taken control over what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a child of God today. Men who have never opened up a Bible. Men who won't open up a Bible unless it has a certain man's name on it. Uh-oh. They are trying to tell believers what's right and what's wrong today. They are trying to tell me one who opens up the Bible, no matter whose name is on it, so long as it is about my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, so long as it is his word and his gospel, I know the word of God. I don't need no evil man that's never opened up the good book to tell me right and wrong. Men who are unapologetically, who unapologetically move out of bitterness and hatred today, preaching to believers how they should think, what they should do, even telling them how to vote today. I ain't holding back. These evil men have the audacity to say that you aren't a Christian if you don't do what they say you are supposed to do. Who do you think you are today? Jesus, he warned us believers to beware those who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Sadly, the ravenous wolves, they are in the fold today. And the reason why they are in the fold today is because believers, they lack the conviction to stand up to them. They lack the conviction to, to stand up in truth, to stand up in the name of Jesus to stand up in the name of the Lord, to stand up in faith today. Rather than having a heart of conviction and standing in, in the Lord's name today, standing in truth today, many believers chose to, to sat by and still sit by silently while wickedness prevails in this battle of good versus evil today. Scripture, I want you to understand today, it makes it very clear that the believers shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't be standing by sitting down in the battle of good versus evil today. Scripture makes it very clear that, that we as God's children, we who are of sincere faith today, we should always be ready to fight on the side of good in the battle of good versus evil. Paul, he said that we should be ready in season and out of season to correct, to rebuke, and to encourage through the ministering of, of the word of God. Are you doing that today? Nowhere in scripture does the Lord encourage us to bow down to a calf of gold. Nowhere in scripture are we told by the Lord that we are to bow down to evil men and that we are to listen to, that we are to heed their word and that we are to move in it. Nowhere will you find it in the Bible. Do you know who you are today? Are you standing on the side of good today? You see, I share with you the story of Daniel today because Daniel, he sets the example for us how we should fight in the battle of good versus evil. Daniel, he was a man who was fully convicted of faith in the Lord. Daniel, he was a fighter who had the heart of a rebel Rebel in that he was not going to conform to the way of evil men. If you don't want to conform to those evil men today, I encourage you to do as Daniel did. What did Daniel do? Again, taking a look there at my responsive read in my scripture for today, we'll see there in my key verse for today, there in the eighth verse that Daniel, he purposed in his heart. In other words, he planned. He had intentions in his heart, we are told there, that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies. 
his diet and, and the wine to drink. Again, that was what was in his heart. I find this, this very interesting because they had changed the name of Daniel. They said that his name was, was Belteshazzar. And when they did that, Daniel didn't say a thing. The Babylonians, they called him outside of his name. You know how people are, they call you by some other name, don't care about what your name is. Think it's a joke, think that it is funny. <clears throat> Daniel, he, he sat by, he let them have that. Though his name had been changed, there was no change where his identity really was. His true identity was in his heart. The heart that again, that's our soul that I'm talking about today. That is where your true identity, that's where it lies today. The enemy may call you outside of your name. They may think that it is a joke. They may think that it is a laughing matter. They, they may try to afflict you. But I, I tell you today, when it comes to your soul, the Lord is not going to permit your soul to be harmed by those wicked and evil men. I think about Job and how Satan threw everything he could at Job. But the Lord said to Satan, I'm not going to allow you. I'm not going to permit you to, to harm the soul of my servant. And so with this in mind, Daniel, when these men, when they tried to come along the way, tried to force their diet onto him, Daniel, he finally said something. He said, nope, not going to happen. He purposed in his heart because Daniel saw them trying to, again, defile him, corrupt him, get him to go against the law by which he lived by. The law by which he lived was, again, God's law. Daniel, he had no intention of giving up what was in his heart. Because, again, what was in his heart was God. What was in his heart was the law of God. Daniel's true identity was that of an obedient child of God. When you willingly give your heart to evil men, when you willingly give your soul to evil men, you have lost. You have lost in the battle of good versus evil. Have you given your heart to evil men today? And so Daniel, we'll see there again, looking at my key verse there. He went to the chief of the eunuchs with a request for he and him, he and his friends there. Daniel, he requested that they not defile themselves by consuming the king's delicacies. Daniel, he wanted to stick by what it was that God had instructed them to do. Daniel, he's showing us believers here. He's showing us how we fight against evil. Again, I want you to understand here that Daniel's request, it took courage. Daniel's request here, it took conviction. You see, Daniel, he was not afraid because, again, his heart was full of conviction and faith in the word of God and faith in the Lord himself. But we'll see there in the 10th verse that the eunuch, he was, he was a bit hesitant there. You see, the eunuch, he, he doubted there that Daniel's diet would be better than, than the king's diet. You see, the eunuch, he had conformed himself to the way of the king. A long time ago, he had conformed himself. And you see, those who are wicked, those who will conform to wickedness, they begin to believe that the way of wickedness is better than another way, the way of God. Will you conform today? You see, those who are of wickedness and those who conform to wickedness, they begin to believe that the way of wickedness is the best way, the only way. The eunuch, he couldn't see no other way. There you said, no, there is another way. There is the way of my God, he said there. Again, Daniel, 
he had conviction here. You see, Daniel's faith, it was completely in the Lord. Daniel, he put all of his trust in the Lord. Are you putting all of your trust in the Lord today? In the battle of good versus evil. With this conviction, Daniel, he suggested to the eunuch there, we'll see in the 12th and in the 13th verse. He suggested to the eunuch to give them 10 days on the diet that was ordained by the Mosaic law, that was ordained by the Lord. He said, give us 10 days. And afterwards, you could come and you can test our appearance against those who, who go and they eat uh, the king's delicacies. Some would say that Daniel was, was betting on God, but is it really betting on the Lord who can do all things? Is it really a bet when you are trusting in the one who created you, the one who made you, the one who is omnipotent, the one who's omniscient, the one who's omnipresent? Is it really a bet when you know that God can do all things for you and will do all things for you? Is that really a bet? Scripture shows us there that after 10 days, the eunuch, he came back and he viewed the, the appearance of Daniel and his friends. And what he saw there was something that amazed him. It was something that astounded him. The health of Daniel and his friends was more than better than those who chose to eat all the king's delicacies and drink the king's wine. And so when the eunuch saw that, the eunuch, we're told there that, that he put away, he put away the provisions from the king there. The eunuch, he was able to see the blessing of God again because of the conviction of heart, the conviction of Daniel's faith there. This, this eunuch was able to see that God's way through Daniel was better than the king's way. And so, oh, he quickly took it away from, he quickly took that food away from the king, the, the king's delicacy. He quickly took it away from Daniel them. They didn't need it. The conviction of Daniel's faith, it was rewarded. And he and his friends, scripture shows us there, they were blessed. We're told there in the 17th verse there that the Lord blessed them with knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. Daniel was also given understanding in all visions and dreams. Because again, he chose to be of faith. His conviction was in the Lord. He never conformed. He stood by God and we see that God stood with him. And we see that God blessed him. In this showdown that was beginning here in the first chapter of Daniel of good versus evil. Let's understand something today. Evil men, they fight with conviction. They believe that their way is the best way. They believe their way is the only way. And so they fight with conviction to try to force their way onto others. We who choose to stand on the side of good today, I tell you today that we must fight today with the same kind of conviction in our heart against those who are of an evil heart today. There is a battle that is taking place and now is not for you. Now is not the time for you to cower. Now is not the time for God's children to be sitting down in this fight. When you are fighting the good fight of faith, I tell you today that you must fight with conviction in this fight for good. To be convicted of faith. Would you understand today? that you must fully align yourself with God in both thought, word, and deed. And as I said at the start of this sermon, believing is simply the starting point of faith. 
You must move in faith. It's not enough for you to say the words. It's time for you to put words into action today. So your thoughts, your actions, I tell you today, they must be aligned with God so that you are able to produce the fruits of the spirit so that you produce the fruits that are good fruits, the fruits that are of love today. Daniel's heart and actions, they were fully aligned with the Lord and look at the results. Look at the results that are shown to us there. The results that are shown to us there is that good prevailed. Good was fought for by Daniel and good was won by Daniel because of the conviction of faith that was in his heart. Do you have that same kind of conviction today? That's the only way that good will prevail today. You see, Daniel, he saw a blessing not just for himself, but his friends. They were also uplifted because of the conviction of faith that was in his heart today. Even the eunuch we see there, even the eunuch was able to see the blessing of the Lord. Even the eunuch was able to recognize the blessing of the Lord. We who are fully convicted in faith today, I tell you again, we are needed in this fight today. In this battle of good versus evil, I want you to understand today, you are needed. Don't you be sitting down today on your faith. Won't get no amens there. You see, when you see your brother fighting the good fight of faith, I tell you today that you need to join your brother. When you see your sister fighting the good fight of faith, Full of conviction. I tell you today, you need to join your sister with the same kind of conviction in the good fight of faith. You don't leave them out there hanging by themselves. They need you by their side today. You see, it is time for us true Christians to, to stand up in our conviction of faith today. It's time for us to stand up in good works today. It's time for us to stand up in love today. It's time for us to take back the name of Christianity. It's time for us to take back what it means to be a child of God and stop letting evil and wicked men run around saying that they are a child of God, saying that they are Christian when they ain't. You see, I tell you today, I ain't never going to bow down to another. I don't know about y'all. I ain't, I ain't never going to bow down to no cow for gold. I ain't bowing down to their lies. I ain't bowing down to their ways of wickedness. I ain't bowing down to their ways of evil. No matter how much they cry out, say, Christians, you ought to do this. Nope. I don't know what Christians you looking for, but you ain't looking for me. Like Daniel, I tell you today, we need to purpose in our heart today to stand by the conviction of faith, joining those who are in need, joining those who are in need of help, fighting the good fight of faith for those whose rights and freedoms are being encringed on. We need to stand and we need to fight today against the lies of evil men who, again, they, they misinterpret and then they move against the word of God. We are needed today to show what the word of God really is. We are needed today to show somebody what the word of God in action, what it actually looks like today. We are needed in this fight today of good versus evil. So again, like Daniel, we need to purpose in our heart today to stand by our conviction of faith. We need to stand by our confession of faith today. We must stand by our confession to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So 
I say to you today, fight the good fight of faith. Put on the whole armor of God. And I tell you today, do battle. Don't you shy away from the fight. God has said that you should be on the battlefield. Fighting for the Lord. Ain't that what we sing? So I say to you today, make sure your feet are standing in the gospel shoes of peace. So that, so that you're walking in it. So that you're running in it. So that you're fighting for peace. I say to all you today that you need to make sure that you are carrying that shield of faith. So that you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the evil one. I say to you today that you need to make sure that you have the sword of the spirit, which Paul said is the word of God so that you can fight again with the word of God in hand, knowing what's right, knowing what is good, knowing the truth, knowing exactly what it is that you're fighting for today. Again, I say to you today, you need to make sure that you're in this battle. And you need to make sure that you're standing for what is good in this battle of good versus evil. Because again, when we stand in the name of Jesus, he will prevail. Good will prevail. If you agree with me, say amen. 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 One more time, amen. 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 Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this week's message and I hope that you'll share it with someone somewhere. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you like this video, follow the channel as well as hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any notifications, so that you don't miss any of the wonderful videos that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.